Hello and welcome to this uh, focus in this video on DE education. Today I'll be talking about creating effective instructor presence in your DE class here on Canvas at Lake Tahoe Community College. So let's begin the conversation. Okay, so let's jump into our video today talking about instructor presence in your online Canvas class. Again, uh, the purpose of a video like this is not to be prescriptive and to tell you exactly what to do in your DE online classes, but more to engage some conversations about how we can improve upon what we're doing in our DE classes, just as we would in our face-to-face -face classes or our incarcerated students' classes. So one thing that I think is really important to talk about is the need for consistent interaction. You can think of it, if you have a face-to-face um, -face class that meets two days a week, when you meet with your students face-to-face, -face, you have interaction. You also have interaction in your office hours. And on other occasions, if you see students on campus and you have a student event or something like that, you may not be talking about class um, information, but you often have face-to-face -face contact with students. In the DE world, because we're doing everything virtually, it's sometimes a little more challenging for all of us to have that level of consistent interaction that we would like. So I think it's important for all of us in our areas, whether we teach mathematics or anthropology or art or whatever the class is, if it's taught online, to have some internal dialogues with ourselves to ask, how can I consistently interact with my students virtually in some of the same ways I would in a face-to-face -face class? And then also have some conversations at your department level. Talk to your department chairs, talk to other part-time or full-time faculty in the areas. Because I find it's very likely that by sharing tips with one another, you can come to some conclusions about some effective practices that could be possible. And actually in that regard, I wanted to mention um, some time ago, I was part of a, a collection called Strategies in Teaching Anthropology. And this was a group of anthropologists who would get together at the annual American Anthropological Association meetings and would share teaching ideas. And over time, we collected techniques from throughout the field, people who taught at community colleges, people who taught at universities and so forth. So for example, this is a strategy teaching economic theory in anthropology using the classic game of Monopoly. And there are hundreds and hundreds of these that many of us have been involved in collecting over the years. Why, the reason I'm mentioning this is because sometimes we find that strategies in a face-to-face -face classroom for um, working with students, for making our presence felt, for having positive interaction, those strategies are often specific to our disciplines. And thus, I'm really encouraging everyone to seek out colleagues in your field to make sure that you have a clear sense of how you might approach consistent interaction in whatever discipline that you happen to be teaching. So something to think about. And that's actually my next point. So I'm just making this, this point because if you're teaching mathematics, which I don't know at all, versus teaching anthropology, I could imagine that the way that you approach getting students to engage with the material, to having feedback with you, to learning about the material, that's gonna vary really at the instructor level and then certainly at the disciplinary level at the level of what it is that you teach. And I think it's really important to state this because we can't necessarily apply, for example, strategies of engagement or pedagogical strategies from anthropology in the field of mathematics. And I think it's important to recall this because we can't necessarily come up with a fix for all disciplines out there in terms of the techniques that will work to create what I'm calling in this video instructor presence. It's very important to point out that when you're creating a class and when you're working through that class, that none of the classes that we offer in the online format are what we call correspondence classes. Correspondence classes in the old days were, you know, you would fill out worksheets, send them in the mail, and the professor would um, respond to those. And I'm saying professor in quotes because I think pedagogically there is a challenge with, which ha with having a form of interaction like that that really doesn't have a lot of depth through it, a lot of nuance, doesn't have a lot of connection. So I think it's really important to state this, that we're not offering correspondence classes. What that means is the minute the shell opens, whether you're teaching fall, winter, spring, or summer, you know, you should be engaged in the class, and then through the moment it closes. That's not really the kind of teaching that you can do if you're gonna take a, a load of time off and so forth, and it's just probably important that if something's happening in your life, whether you're teaching full-time or part-time, 
and you're committing to a class, a DE class, and you know you can't give it that full 11 weeks or six weeks, it varies with the term, it varies whether you're doing a short-term class versus a full-length class, if you can't commit to that time, I think it's just really important to let your department chair or dean know whoever schedules classes for you because it's really key that we avoid classes in the DE format that approach anything like a correspondence class. The reason for that is, the reasons are, are multiple. There are OEI standards, so OEI refers to the online education initiative that some of you may have participated in recently. It's an effort to really improve the quality of online instruction throughout the California Community Colleges. And I went through that um, last summer, and one of the things I liked about it was, so they really stressed instructor presence very heavily, and that led me to really seeing the value of it and stressing the value and having some conversations with all of you about it. I think many of you probably have gone through OEI. If you get a chance to do that though, they will talk about this. They will talk about regular instructor contact. They will talk about how to make yourself visible to students. They'll talk about things like multimedia and engaging some of that material such that your students feel connected to you as an instructor as if they would if you were teaching a face-to-face -face class. We also have accreditation standards. Accreditation is the process by which we get reaffirmed as an institution, and I've been on an accreditation team before, and I can tell you one of the things we look for in going to an institution to do what we call site visit is to make sure that there is effective contact throughout the uh, various teaching modalities, including in this case DE as we teach in Canvas. We also have our own LTCC standards. We really, I think, aspire to do much more with teaching quality and instructor, instructor student connections and all that kind of stuff we think about very heavily in the face to face classes. We also have departmental standards. And this is my reason for encouraging all of you to talk to your department. If you teach mathematics or English, engage your department chair, engage your colleagues, and ask questions like what are the best approaches? in our program to reach students. For example, in foreign languages and world languages, they do a lot with handheld apps on mobile devices and using those as a way to better engage students to work through conversation. If they're teaching Spanish, of course, you need to make sure that students are having the kind of quality interaction with their peers, fellow students, as well as their instructors in those classes. So those are some reasons why we stress instructor presence to the extent that we do. The instructor contact, this is something I mentioned that happens in the OEI process. Just to be sure, so when you set up your syllabus, make sure, and I can jump here to my online class, that you have your contact information available for your students. So for example, right here, I have my email, I have my website, if you have a website, I have my um, phone extension, and I give my preferred method of contact. I could maybe add something on here as well about using the Canvas uh, inbox, which is, I think, very handy for students and instructors to use. And then I also have on here my office hours. So if you teach part-time and you don't have scheduled office hours, and typically in the past we, we were paying part-time instructors for this, I heard recently that um, with the new governor with some of his budget cuts, maybe office hours have been reduced, which I think is very unfortunate because we realize that office hours are an important part of that pedagogical interaction that happens between students and instructors. But this is where you should have at some place in your syllabus, I put it at the top, but make sure your students can get hold of you. Um, give them some information about who you are. Um, personalize the class, and I'll talk about some of this later, some of the ways I approach this. And then one of the other things I think you could put on here is some statement about how long it might take you to respond to a student request. If that's an email, if it's a, um, a grade that they're, the student is waiting for, um, some kind of feedback on an assignment, if they're doing projects or whatever. So it, it might be important to include that as well, just as a way of saying, hey, I'm here and I'm available. I've even seen some instructors do virtual, um, different approaches to doing virtual office hours. You, we can use Skype. We can use a lot of teleconferencing techniques. We can use the chat room inside of Canvas, which is really handy. So a group of us, uh, a group of students and an instructor can have a conversation together. So I think down the road, we'll do a workshop or have a video about some techniques to mimic some of the things we do, say, in traditional office hours with our students. Now, one thing that's very clear, I think, in online classes is the challenge of asynchronicity. So asynchronicity refers to the fact that if a student completes an assignment, such as a discussion post, 
and the next student does it and then you respond to that, the time between each of those moments could be significant. It might be a few hours, it could be an entire day and so forth. As a result of that, if you have issues, say, of a behavioral nature, and I'll have some other videos on this topic, where you're trying to deal with students, you're trying to work with them, you're trying to make sure that they don't say inappropriate things in the class, in the virtual class, because there's a lag of time, sometimes things can get a little out of hand before you can jump in, nip it in the bud, and so forth. So what I tend to say is that, you know, to be consistently engaging with your class as you would a face-to-face -face class does allow you to deal with this challenge a little bit. In terms of instructor presence as well, if you're not on there a lot, if you just post one comment, or if you never engage in the discussion boards, then not only do you have the challenge of the asynchronous nature of the communication, but if you're not communicating at all with students in the class, very likely they're not gonna feel your presence as an instructor. And this is my point about class discussions. If you're using class discussions, and my sensibility is that I think more and more, and more of us need to have discussions in some format, they need to have moderation. You can't just have the moderation being conducted by the students because you're the expert in the field. Imagine if you had a face-to-face -face class and you set the class loose and said, you guys have a discussion, I'm gonna go take a break and do some grading or whatever, get a coffee. Well, that's fine, and, and I'm not saying students intellectually couldn't or emotionally couldn't engage one another, but there's a reason we are all hired as experts in our field. We're the ones who can negotiate the complex realities of the classroom that often happen, in, in social sciences at least, when we're engaging with very sensitive, personal, political, and even upsetting subjects. So you need to be there moderating just as you would moderate in a traditional face-to-face -face class. And we'll have some future conversations about this, maybe a workshop or some additional videos. One thing I would, I would mention to you is that instructor presence is often related to personalization. One of the things you can do, and I'll just jump to my um, class here, but one of the things I often do is when I introduce myself to students, I often will include my web page, I'll do, I have a little video that introduces my, my research and so forth. So I think it's a good opportunity to really use your virtual presence through personalization or to increase, I should say, your virtual presence through personalization. Um, who you are, hobbies, images of yourself, videos of yourself, it could even be with your cat or your dog. That just shows the human side of it, of who you are as an instructor. I've sometimes heard in the K-12 arena that if you show vulnerability, and a model for this is probably a TED Talk. If you watch a TED Talk, there's a certain formula there about how a person starts off and says, you know, I set out to become a PhD molecular biologist at Harvard and I got my degree, but then I was trekking through the Amazon and I discovered I didn't know anything at all and I had to come with the fact of, I had to come to terms with the fact of my ignorance. There's a certain formula there that I think often works in a TED talk because someone has a lot of credentials or they're a world-class skier or some daredevil athlete or astronaut, yet they humanize it and personalize it early in those TED Talks by saying something like, well, I'm really nothing, or well, I'm very humble, and so forth. This is a way to do that in your DE class. In other words, to engage your students by saying, hey, I'm a real person, I don't just teach biology, but I have a dog, I have a cat, I like hiking, I like skiing, I like cooking vegan cuisine, or something like this. So that's a great opportunity to increase our presence with our students. I'm also gonna argue that instructor presence is related to video and multimedia use. So anytime we can engage our students at the level of multimedia, and I'll have a video coming up shortly on this topic, that's gonna increase, I believe, their comprehension. That's gonna increase, increase their engagement with you, with their students, and the materials and context in the class. And that's gonna just, I think, just create a more personal space. And when I'm talking about this, I'm really talking about using videos that you record like this video you jump online you use the canvas app to record a video or an audio recording you use an iphone as i'm using today or another camera and then you put that up on your website you put that up on on youtube or you put that up on canvas as an embedded uh, media form and then the students engage with that so be on the lookout for my additional future videos talking about some of this work and by all means i would say 
anytime you're, you're doing anything in your class, you know, teaching wise, increasing your, your presence with students, to really think about creative techniques for doing this. Um, there are some math instructors on campus that actually will shoot videos uh, explaining concepts and they'll do this in different locations um, to make a point. So maybe they'll go out um, where there's running water or there's something unique on campus if they're teaching geometry and they can show an angle or some kind of physical property or whatever. So being creative in opening up to your students and increasing your presence with them, increasing your connection with them and doing more personalization with them as you engage them and talk about who you are. I think you know creativity goes a super long way because the last thing you want to do in, in a class is do a boring video. Do, do something that's very traditional and maybe doesn't have pop. And we'll talk about a little bit of that in, in a future video. And I'm mentioning too that um, as part of my new role as a faculty a chair of teaching and learning here at LTCC, I will be doing uh, both in my office and on campus and virtually through webcasts that all of you can watch uh, if you're not here in Lake Tahoe, be doing more trainings. So for example, next fall, winter, spring, we'll have trainings about this very, this exact topic. We'll have trainings about plagiarism in your online classes. We'll have trainings about um, how to uh, engage students in interactive activities and a multitude of other topics, including, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the topic of behavioral issues uh, in the classroom. So um, thank you for listening today. I'll be back with more videos and workshops in the future. And by all means, good luck in your endeavors as you work, as we all do, to increase our level of presence with our students here at Lake Tahoe Community College in our DE online classes through the Canvas LMS system. Thank you.